So you're thinking about getting chickens because the egg prices are through the roof and you also think it's time for a new fun hobby. In this video, we're gonna cover all the elements that your coop is gonna need in order for them to stay safe and happy. For example, how do you make your coop predator proof? Where do you put your roosting bars? What should your nesting boxes look like? What kind of bedding do you have on the inside? How do you increase your biosecurity? What should your feeding and watering system look like? And more things like that. First, let's talk about predators. Every chicken tender has dealt with predators and it's a huge loss when one of your favorite animals goes missing because a predator got in. So how can you make your coop very, very safe? First of all, you should be using netting around your coop to keep them in that is a lot stronger than chicken wire. Chicken wire is very popular because it's easy to install, it stretches easily, it's easy to cut, but it's designed to keep chickens in an enclosed space, but it is not predator proof at all. So what you should be using is hardware cloth. The reason that this one has chicken wire on it, and this is a very safe spot, is because this coop is inside my barn. And so for an animal to get inside here, they would have to tunnel under our entire barn. And then they would also have to try to get through um, the netting that's in here. The most common predators for chickens are gonna be hawks and owls, coyotes, skunks, raccoons, and possums. And some of those may be like, well, I thought that those were not very, um, aggressive animals, but skunks actually love to eat flesh <laughs> and possums are very, very sneaky. They can climb over fences. And so to increase your security, your fencing, whether you're using chicken wire inside of another enclosed space or hardware cloth if you're outside, your fencing should go down and you should add a skirt all the way around your coop. So it should go down, don't disconnect it. And when you provide a three foot skirt around the entire enclosure, Thank you, macaroni. Then um, what you're doing is preventing them from easily tunneling under your coop to get inside. Also, if you have a large chicken run that is outside, consider covering the top of that run with a bird netting or a hardware cloth. Thank you, sweet pea. What I have here is a very, very clean egg. It's easy to get dirty eggs out of your coop because chickens are messy and they poop everywhere. But let's talk about the importance of roosting bars and why that would keep your egg clean. Last year during farm camp, a whole bunch of kids helped me build this really cool roosting ladder. The animals are able to climb up here and sit on these long branches, and that's where they love to sleep. Chickens naturally want to sleep somewhere up high at night because that's where, how they feel safe from predators. But if you don't give them roosting bars, guess where they're gonna sleep? They're gonna end up sleeping in the nesting boxes. And guess what else they do when they sleep? They poop everywhere. And that means that your eggs are gonna get covered in poop. And if I wanted to um, give my eggs away to neighbors or sell them or have hatching eggs that I sell, Um, I don't like the idea of selling dirty eggs to anybody. So to keep my eggs clean and to keep my nesting boxes clean, I make sure that my chickens have somewhere that they feel safe and comfortable sleeping. And that is on these roosting bars. Let's go look at the nesting boxes. These are my nesting boxes and I have a whole lot in here, but guess what? They really prefer just to use one or two of these boxes. When they see an egg, they tend to go right there in that same spot and lay their own egg. One thing that you can do very early on to get your chickens to lay in the right spot is to put a golf ball or a fake ceramic egg um, or something that looks like an egg and they naturally are gonna gravitate and lay their eggs in that same spot. I have my nesting, <laughs> she just fell off of a bucket. Sorry. I have my nesting boxes filled with pine shavings. Pine shavings is a really good soft bedding choice. It keeps the eggs clean. It also prevents any cracking from when the egg drops from the bird, it doesn't hit hard and accidentally crack it. So this is my nesting boxes. And right now we're getting about a dozen eggs a day from my girls. Remember when we were talking about the roosting bars, if you make your animals feel safe and secure, you're gonna get a lot more production from them. And so roosting bars and really comfortable nesting boxes where they feel like they can go in any time of the day and put their egg in there, make their little egg deposit, um, you're gonna get a lot more production out of your birds. Let's talk about the kind of bedding that you have in your coop. There's two things that I really like to use. One is sand and the other is pine shavings. Sand is really neat because it doesn't create a very, uh, good environment for bacteria to grow and you can sift it with a sifting shovel i made one myself and i'll put the link in the comments below um, and that is how you can kind of remove all the droppings put them in your compost put them in your garden whatever you want to do with it um, but the other thing that you can use besides sand is pine shavings now i'm using pine shavings over the winter in this coop and the reason is um, i'm doing the deep litter method the deep litter method um, is really, really interesting because um, you simply add more pine shavings, more and more pine shavings to your coop. And what's gonna happen is there's going to be a lot of 
um, micro activity um, in your deep litter and that creates a very, very warm bed. So much like you will see a, a pile of mulch steaming in the winter, it is so warm even though it's cold outside, it's just because you are creating a, a, a home for a lot of little um, micro organisms um, to get in here and to do their <laughs> activity. And so at the end of winter, which is coming very, very soon for us, I'm gonna clean out all of this and I have aged chicken poop, which is gonna be so great in the garden um, and a whole bunch of pine shavings, which also compost very well. I'm gonna put it in my garden and then I'm gonna fill this with sand. Sand is gonna be here in the spring, summer and fall and then I'll do the bee litter, litter method again in the fall. Now let's talk about how to provide fresh water for your chickens. I have a bunch of different kind of waterers for my chickens, but my favorite one is one that I made out of a trash can. I ordered little orange cups that come with gaskets and little spinners off of Amazon. They were called little cluckers and I made my own chicken watering system. In the summer, this lasts for a week. In the winter, it lasts for a week or two. I'm gonna put the video in the description below so that you can go and look at it, but this is by far the easiest way to water my chickens and having a big amount of water means that I can add their medicine to it, I can add electrolytes to it, I can add apple cider vinegar, which is really good probiotics for your chickens to promote gut health. Um, so my favorite method is to use this trash can. It worked so incredibly well and I've had it for now seven months um, and it remains extremely clean. When I open the lid, I can drink the water that's inside of it. That is how clean it stays. So I love this system. I know a lot of other people have small um, chicken waterers, but I find them very tedious to clean. They get so dirty um, and to keep them full. So trash can water it is. Next, let's talk about the best way to feed your birds. Now my adult birds in here in this coop, um, they get their food scattered along the ground. That takes them a really long time to eat and it gonna, it's gonna promote their natural habits of foraging for their food. Bored birds tend to pick fights and bloody each other up and it doesn't really promote a good egg laying situation because they're stressed. So by scattering the food and making them hunt for it, uh, my big birds have enrichment during the day by having to scavenge for the food that I scattered in here. But for my little birds, I have baby birds, I have less baby birds, and then I have teenage birds. And I have a big five gallon feeder um, that- Oh, that was oh the silky. Gosh, it's a silky. It's a, he is never, the cutest little crow. I've never heard of a For as I was saying, I'm easily distracted by chickens. As I was saying, for my little birds, for the babies that I have, the ones that just hatched that are like three days old in my house, and for my teenage birds that are not ready to join the adult birds in here, they have a five gallon feeder that is completely full. Now what I have learned with my little baby birds is that you can feed them once or twice or three times a day, but they have on the side of their neck something called a crop. And when they eat too much all in one sitting, their crop gets really, really full and it can get... crop can get really, really full and it can lead to it becoming impacted and infected and then you can lose your birds this way. I would rather them have... <coughs> Not so cute anymore. We I heard you. I think he likes doing it now. I think we encouraged him way too much with the, with the crowing. <laughs> when I give them um, a source of food that's available 24-7, they tend to eat when they're hungry rather than... <coughs> rather than gorge themselves all at once and create a really, really full crop. So my big birds tend to eat um, a little less frantically than the babies. Whereas my little ones, I just want them to eat whenever they're hungry and not feel like they have to gorge themselves every time they see food coming. <laughs> Shut up! Boy, we changed our opinion about that real fast. <laughs> All right, now, one of the hardest things for a new chicken owner, even for a seasoned chicken owner, is to recognize these. Can you take your silky out for me? One of the hardest things about being a chicken owner is feeling, oh my gosh. Eliza, can you go to the and treat disease and pests. One of the hardest things about being a new chicken owner, even a seasoned chicken owner, is to deal with diseases and pests. One of the biggest things that you can do to prevent the spread of disease is to keep it very clean. 
You're gonna be a chicken nugget, Big Mac. Do you hear me? He needs the mix. Shut up. One of the best things that you can do to prevent the spread of disease in your chickens is to keep really clean bedding and keep really clean water. Whenever you see the first sign of a problem, go ahead and quarantine that bird away from everybody else. Yeah, so there's a whole list of diseases and how you're gonna treat it, and I'll do a video on that later. But three main things. Keep the bedding clean, keep their water clean, and you need to lay eyes on your chickens every single day. Okay. Lastly, when we're thinking about keeping our coop as comfortable and as safe as possible, you need to think about extreme temperatures. In the summer, it gets really hot in North Carolina, and in the winter, we can see snow here. So what are some of the things that I do to protect my birds from becoming too hot or too cold? In the winter, one of the most dangerous things for your chickens, even adult chickens, is a draft. One of the things that I have in my barn is I have a window that stays open even in the winter time and that helps to create some ventilation that gets fresh air in here. But one thing that I have is our coop is surrounded by our barn on all sides and that prevents any kind of draft from crossing in here and making them very, very cold. Chickens are very susceptible to the cold, especially in a drafty situation. So you want ventilation, but you need to pr protect them from drafts. One thing that you can do to protect your coop from those crosswinds is to cover your coop in pl plastic. You can use wood. Um, I've seen people use landscape fabric, whatever prevents a crosswind from coming in and creating a chill. What you could do is cover the bottom of it, leaving the top open so that you have plenty of ventilation and fresh air coming in there. In the summertime, if they have access to outdoors, make sure they always have access to fresh water. They have to have access to shade and you can provide some ice treats like some frozen corn inside of water that you hang up or leave frozen water bottles around that they can cool off on. Um, but I think the most effective thing that you can do with keeping your birds safe from extreme weather is to find a breed that does really, really well in your climate. Some of my birds, like frizzles, are actually a little bit sensitive to the cold weather. So I actually don't let them free range at all during the winter um, because I'm just so afraid of losing them to the, to the cold weather. They don't always make it back upstairs into this part of the barn um, before the night falls if I'm not here. And that means that they're susceptible to getting way too cold. They could get frostbite, they could also die. But I suggest that you research the kind of birds that do really well in your climate and add those to your cage. I know you're wondering if you should heat your coop in the winter time. The answer for your adult birds is no, they don't need heat. Um, if they are protected from drafts, but you have plenty of ventilation, they will be just fine. In fact, heating your coop um, in the winter for your adult birds, it can mess with their natural circadian rhythm. It can mess up their sleep cycles. But I am gonna be talking about how to heat a coop for your baby birds that are in your brooder. I have several different kinds of heaters and I'm gonna make a video on that coming up next. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video of all the elements that you need to create a safe and happy, healthy coop for your birds. That's all for today's video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.